Hey, this is Danny here from Podcast Stories. Thanks so much for listening, and I'd love for you to get the latest episodes when they're released. So make sure to follow on your favourite podcast app, or hop on over to podcasterstories.com slash listen. If you enjoy the show and want to support it, you can do that at podcasterstories.com slash support to join other supporters just like you. Thanks so much for being part of the Podcaster Stories community. And now, here's this week's episode. I get more out of the podcast than probably anybody listening. I mean, at the end of the day, I do it for me. Um, and I do want others to learn from it because part of my mission is to, you know, when I got divorced, I was able to get through it from hearing other people's stories. So I want other people to be able to learn from whatever I'm talking about in the podcast. But I mean, every conversation I have with every guest and we're only human is generally I'm walking away like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I had that conversation. You know, it, there might be some moment they had in their life or some way of dealing with a situation that I'm now going to try or some tip for life. And so, you know, like I think about what's your motivation behind your podcast. I hope it's something that's selfishly, you know, benefiting you so that, because that's what's going to keep you going. Hi, and welcome to Podcaster Stories. Each episode, we'll have a conversation with podcasters from across the globe and share their story, what motivates them, why they started a show, how they grew the show, and more. We'll also talk about their personal lives and some of the things that have happened that have made them the person they are today. And now here's your host, Danny Brown. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Podcaster Stories, where we get to meet the people behind the voices of the shows we listen to. This week, I've got someone that I've known for, I think, 10 years now, um, at, at least maybe, um, from the good old early days of social media. Uh, and I believe it's, it's Tim John, pronounced John, correct? Because I used to say Tim Jan, I think, or Tim John, and it's John. Yep, it is John. Awesome. I, I, I kind of remember that discussion that we may have had in someone's blog comments or whatever, where uh, <laughs> I think you, you, sort of, you, you put me straight on <laughs> the pronunciation <laughs> of your, your surname. Um, Tim's the host of We're Only Human, which is a show celebrating the resiliency of the human spirit through conversations with people from all walks of life. So Tim, welcome to the show. Um, how will you tell us about yourself and your podcast? Sure. Um, I started the podcast in November of 2019. So as of today, a little more than a year ago. Um, I'm someone who has always been a creator, all mediums. Um, but around the time we met, I had a, I didn't call it a podcast back then because there wasn't really podcasts. I called it a web interview mm -hmm. video series. Um, but it was the same idea, interviewing people. At the time, it was entrepreneurs. Um, so I've always been enjoyed exploring other people's stories. I'm a very curious person and I just love getting to know people and what makes them tick. So um, that was part of the inspiration for starting this new podcast, which which I said has been about a year ago. So it's it's crazy to think that 55 weeks of, of publishing a podcast just flies by. And, and you do, it's, it's a weekly show. So you mentioned that the previous one, uh, Beyond the Pedway, right? The the video show. Yes, yeah, it was good, that good memory. That's been going for a yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, no, that had been going a while. Um, I think you, you, you'd mentioned yourself, I think you'd probably had over a, a good 150, 200 guests on that show during its duration. Yeah, yeah, that ran for, I don't even remember, two, two and a half years, something around there. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, like I said, it, it's one of the things about podcasting is, or just consistently publishing any media is once you are going for a while, you sit back for a moment and look and you're like, wow, like that's a lot of content. How did I do that? And, and I think I, I, you were certainly, that's possibly how we met as well. You were one of the first people that I saw doing that kind of uh, format where it was, you know, these like short video snippets, if you like, or short video interviews with your guests. And I thought it was kind of cool. So when I saw you were doing a podcast, um, obviously I wanted to check that out and we, we sort of reconnected and you know, I spoke about that. Now, as you mentioned, like, the podcast has been gone since November last year, so uh, just over its one-year anniversary now. What's been the biggest challenge, if there's been a challenge, for example, of switching, say, from a video format that you did beforehand to a purely audio format and, and the direction of the show itself, for example? That's a great question. Switching from video to audio actually wasn't more challenging. It was easier. Um I have a background in both audio and video production, so I'm familiar with editing and, and dealing with both mediums. Um, I joke, I've talked to people about this at, throughout my journey doing We're Only Human now. I never thought that in 2020 I would fall in love with radio. 
<laughs> I love doing, you know, what's basically modern day radio. Um, so it's it's been less challenging technically to do audio as opposed to video. I think the more challenging part with the show has been, and I'm sure it's true with any show, is just keep going. Like, I'm very much a person who wants to be consistent, wants to go all in, wants to deliver a high quality production. And that means that, you know, I chose to do weekly. Um, Got to keep going. So, you know, when when life happens or when things get busy in one area of life during one season, you know, how do I keep going? How do I continue this? Um, and not because I'm being forced to, but because I want to. So, so I think that's been the bigger challenge is just, you know, as I said, I think with any creative project, how do you ensure that you continue, you know, especially with podcasts, like, I don't remember the stats, but apparently like most of them don't keep going beyond like 20 episodes or something or even that. Yeah, I think that, um, there's uh, Apple produced some uh, report um, last year, maybe or earlier this year, that to your point, a lot of people drop off after say 20 episodes or they don't go past like a three month part if they do, you know, like yourself a weekly show or whatever. So it's kind of weird to think there's all these dead radio shows yeah. that you're like just floating about the ether somewhere that, you know, it's... it's and and it's it's interesting now that podcast is podcasting's all you know almost become so like mainstream now. People can you know pick up a phone like with Anchor for example and start recording through that. So it's it's kind of cool to see how you know how much more available it is to people. I guess even though they are dropping off, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. It's it like I said, you know, the beyond the Pedway, the video series I had a decade ago. Like I said, calling it a podcast seems odd because we didn't really have that back then. And nowadays, you know, you can pretty much talk to probably any generation and they, they at least may have heard of the word or understand that it exists. So it's definitely a much more mainstream concept than it ever was. And I know one of my previous guests, Nate Garrison, um, he'd mentioned the 18-month the rule that he sort of plays by, where it's only after about 18 months of consistency uh, to your point about, you know, doing it weekly, doing it at a certain time, high quality, that you really start to see the results coming in and you really start to see the the show pay off, if you like. Oh, boy. Okay, so I got, what, another six months? <laughs> six months. <laughs> so, you're, so you're in that sort of mini gestation period. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, I would believe that. I mean, I think a lot of it has to do, too, with your motivation for doing the show. You know, like, and I'm not... I'm not trying not to judge anybody, but I've seen people out there like, hey, I want to start a podcast. Does anyone have any ideas? And I could totally see the angle of like, I want to learn something new. I want to just learn about podcast production and that's cool. But, you know, if it's more of I want to hop on the bandwagon, I, I don't know if that's the best approach. Like, you know, for me personally, starting the podcast was part wanting to sort of revive um, the creative muscles that had been kind of dormant within me, like bringing back the creativity that I had not been sort of paying attention to for a long time. Um, and then it was also just a, what I call, not what I call, but what insurance companies call a qualifying life event. I got divorced <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, my life shifted and it was all, it was all good, but all of a sudden I now have more time that I didn't have in my life, right? Like I'm still a father, but I'm, you know, see my kids some of the time, not every day, not all day. I live by myself. So all of a sudden I had this space in my life that opened up and combining that with this kind of dormant yearning to be creative again. I just one day threw out on LinkedIn. I'm like, I'm going to start a podcast. And I had no plan on purpose, but I did know that I was going to ride this wherever it took me. And that's still my mission. Like I I get more out of the podcast than probably anybody listening. I mean, at the end of the day, I do it for me. Um, and I do want others to learn from it because part of my mission is to, you know, when I got divorced, I was able to get through it from hearing other people's stories. So I want other people to be able to learn from whatever I'm talking about in the podcast. But I mean, every conversation I have with every guest and we're only human is generally I'm walking away like, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad I had that conversation. You know, it, there might be some moment they had in their life or some way of dealing with a situation that I'm now going to try or some tip for life. And so, you know, like I think about what's your motivation behind your podcast. I hope it's something that's selfishly, you know, benefiting you so that, cause that's, what's going to keep you going. Um, as, like I said, as a lifelong creator, if you're not interested, if I'm not interested in what I'm creating, then it's really hard to keep creating it. 
And it's funny, I, I'm on a bunch of Reddit boards um, for podcasting, and that's one of the things that keeps popping up to your point, Tim, is um, the burnout and how to keep it going when you don't really feel it anymore. And I think people have maybe answered their own question then with that very phrase, if you don't feel it anymore, you're not going to want to do it. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's been times where I just simply wanted to sort of stop. You know, maybe, I'm trying to think of an example, but, you know, parts of life just maybe it was my day job or whatever got too too intense and it was hard to you know fit in the podcast at nights or whatever and i would you know i would reluctantly hop on you know squadcast like we are now i would do the interview with my guest and i would just come alive again i would remember why i was doing this i i you know it would be an amazing conversation and then boom i'd be back like how did i ever doubt this why would i ever want to stop i'm learning so much so you know again if i wasn't in it sort of you know, from that place of like genuine, I want, again, for me, it's curiosity. I want to learn. And as long as I'm going to keep learning, I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to keep wanting to do this. And that's going to hopefully be what, you know, keeps me going to, I guess, at least that 18 month milestone. <laughs> now, speaking of your show, you mentioned, obviously you want to learn um, as much from, you know, your guests and for your own benefit as the listeners do. And I know looking at the topics that you discuss with your guests on the show, it talks about, it plays in perfect, obviously, to the, the premise of the show about resiliency. You've had guests talk about sexual assault, life-changing injuries through car accidents, uh, failed businesses and how to recover from that, mental health and more. So from these conversations and, and knowing your own background going into the podcast, do you see similar characteristics in your guests and, and yourself that kind of instills that level of resiliency? Is there sort of a, a defining characteristic, do you think? Yeah, there's been so many themes that have sort of woven through um, all the conversations. One of the big ones is one I'm a fan of, and it's this reminder that we constantly need to remind ourselves of is that we're all just making this up as we go along. Um, it sort of lends itself or it sort of pairs itself with imposter syndrome, this idea that like I can never be good enough. I'm not good enough for what I'm doing. Everyone else is better. Um, that comes up every time. And I, I deal with that all the time. And it, we always just kind of end up talking about this idea that like, it turns out that person that you think has it all figured out, they probably don't. And they're trying to figure it out just like you are. So it's sort of this comfort in this idea that like, you're not alone. Like we are not alone in this. A recent guest I had was Mari Luan Greth Ulrich, and she um, she was part of what got me through my divorce in the sense that she had gotten divorced, she had remarried, and the, her and her partner had blended their families. They both had children, and they became one blended family. And she's now working on an idea to sort of help other blended families. But we were talking about this idea that, you know, of all the marriages out there, 50% end up getting divorced. That's 50% of the population that no one really talks about. Like, it's kind of a taboo conversation. And it's, again, going back to the idea of, like, once you start learning more about it, like, again, it's 50%. We're not alone out there. Like, we're, we're half the population. Um, so, I mean, it just kind of highlights this example of, like, whatever you think you're going through and you think you're alone in doing it, every conversation I've ever had on We're Only Human has taught me that you are not alone. Like, it really... I can't think of any, any example where you're the only one going through what you're going through. So that's kind of why, you know, I mentioned earlier of like wanting to share stories so other people can learn from it. That's one of my main missions is just like literally to tell people you're not alone. And it's interesting you mentioned Mari because her name came up um, I was as I was catching up on some of the episodes and you'd mentioned it yourself that she was a key part of when you were going through your divorce and, and getting over it and her experiences and how that helped you. Um, so, so with such a... Um, a varied, you know, um, list, if you like, of guests that you've been speaking to. Are there any episodes like Mari's episode that have kind of stood out for you um, for any reason? And if so, why that particular episode? Not that it was better or, you know, whatever, not to put, you know, your guests, getting favourite guests or anything. But is there any, any episodes like Mari's that kind of stood out for you? So many. Um, <laughs> there was this one with this woman. Her name is Dr. Rita Fields. This was probably back in the spring of 2020 that it came out. Um, but she has this amazing story of just resiliency and just starting from nothing and working her way up to, to find what she wanted her life to be. But the one thing she shared along the way completely changed my outlook. Um, I'm someone who sort of always feels like I'm trying to work towards some big thing in life. Like there's some big end game, 
you know, this is, you know, I'm trying to be famous or successful or, you know, make a lot of money or whatever. And this converse, this theme, by the way, has come up with so many other guests, but um, Rita, she told me about this um, sort of idea of that life can be a series of trains that you're on. And so like at any given moment, you're on a train and that train's purpose is just to take you from point A to point B and life is a series of these. And so at some point you're going to get off that train and hop on the next one. And there's no real destination in mind. It's just a series of switching from these journeys on these trains. And that really resonated with me because that's kind of, I think, such a much healthier way of looking at life. Like it's not this one long train ride where you're hoping to get to the end or you're hoping that when you get to the end, it's whatever you're you're working for. But it's more of these little journeys along the way where whatever you're doing at the time, whoever you're, you know, you're with, like I think about you know, a friend of mine that we don't really, you know, talk much anymore. And it's not like we had a falling out. We just kind of like naturally started communicating less. And I think about, you know, a decade ago, you know, we were very close and doing a lot together. And to me, it's like an example of like, you know, maybe that train's over, right? Like we were just on that train together and it's not good or bad. It just is. And now I'm on the next one and he might be on a totally separate one. But when she when she kind of brought up that idea, I was just like blown away, and I've I've thought about it ever since, and I, I bring it up all the time with people. Like I just I love this idea that like life is a series of trains. It's almost like that's that's a really cool like uh, analogy. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the the movie Slade Indoors, um, where I think it's Gwyneth Paltrow, and I'm, I can't remember who else was in it. it was a few people in it, um, and basically it, it it was showing the parallel story of the lives of people had they made a different decision um so would you have you know would couples have stuck together would um job interviews have gone good bad etc and it just showed you how these lives you know took two different paths based on one tiny split decision of you know like changing a train for example i've never seen that movie but it sounds interesting I that's not something I would have thought I would enjoy. I'm not a Gwyneth Paltrow <laughs> fan. Um, her whole goop thing kind of puts me off. Um, but you know, it's I watched it because of the male lead, who I think is John. I think he's a Scottish actor, John someone, and that shows my level of movie knowledge. But um, no, it was a real interesting story, and I thought it was really well done how they put it all together. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, no, it's it's worth it's it's worth one movie for, for sitting down. It may not be as good as Rita's, uh, you know, example, <laughs> but, but it's 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 there. It's it's a good good enough uh, movie. And and obviously, now your your show clearly pulls from your own experience and the changes you made to your life. As you mentioned, you had what insurance companies call you know that that event um, when you got divorced. Uh, it was last year you got divorced, twenty nineteen. Yeah, it was summer beginning of summer twenty nineteen. So. Clearly, as I mentioned, the, the changes you made to your life and continue to make now. You mentioned now that you're still a father. You still have to juggle, you know, kids between yourself and your wife. And I'm guessing that could be a bit more difficult now with COVID and all the sort of, you know, how you're not allowed to go into your households, limit your numbers, etc. So, what what are some of the things that you've taken from your guests and implemented in your own life over this period of transition for yourself? The biggest thing for me personally has been this idea, and this is why I keep going, is every conversation is a reminder and inspiration of this idea that we can define our own lives. Like this isn't something, I don't know if you've figured this out or anyone listening has, I did not figure this out, that like I am the one who can define my life. Um, I think for a long time, I was just kind of asleep at the wheel and, you know, sort of, going through motions that, you know, whether someone else decided this was a good path for me, or I believe this was a good path for me, or, you know, it was recommended, whatever. But, you know, this idea now that what I do for a living, what I do with my time every day, what I want to do next year, like this is all going to happen based on the intention I put forth. And this is, a, you know, whatever happens and whatever definition my life takes is up to me. And, that is, again, just something I never thought about. Um, and now every week I talk to people and that's all I think about. I, again, it's that's really kind of what I'm doing. I don't literally have a notebook anymore. I did at the beginning, but like it's sort of like this mental notebook of like, Tim, define your life. And here's all these tips from people that I'm learning every week. So maybe one day I should collate them together and put it into <laughs> a notebook. And keep them all in one place. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously now, as you mentioned, we're, we're now at... Um, 
12 months in, like a year for your show. Um, and you've got another six to get to this whole 18 month rule. <laughs> for the, the, I'm the very excited system. about this now. <laughs> it's cool, right? If that doesn't happen, I'm going to go back to Nate and ask him, what the hell, man? <laughs> you know, really? <laughs> so, um, what would you go for the show um, as you look to continue it to, to grow and to, you know, um, update the, well, not update the format, but to continue to define what the show is about and, and who it's for? What are your goals, you know, for the show moving forward? That's a great question because I have iterated my goal so many times in the past year for sure, but even in the past six months. Um, I struggled for a long time trying to understand what the show was about and who it was for. Um, I struggled with a long time with trying to understand what was my goal in doing the show. Was I trying to do this full time? Was I trying to get more downloads month over month? Like what was the goal? Where I've kind of arrived is that the goal is A, for me to keep learning and B, for for my listeners to keep learning. Um, In order to do that, I do want the show to grow in terms of like exposure. Um, I want the people who are listening, you know, today to my show to continue listening and to learn. But I also want to, you know, continue spreading that. The more people I can hopefully help, the better. And so it's it's sort of been this battle internally with myself of like, how to, how to go about doing that, you know? Um, like I said, I, I intentionally started the show with no plan. I'm the type of person as a creator who, as soon as I come up with an idea, I'll start figuring out, you know, the best way to go about it and, and make plans as necessary. I didn't want to do that with this podcast because I didn't want that to hamper whatever this thing was going to do or lead me toward. And so the only thing I did was I I did that initial post on LinkedIn just to say, hey, I'm starting a podcast about resiliency. Um, I think I had an email sign up for him just to see if there was any interest. And, you know, I hadn't bought a microphone. I hadn't done anything. Um, It was just more of a way of saying, hey, world, I'm going to do this and now I have to do it and let's see what happens. Like I said, it's kind of gotten to the point now or where I'm at right now is that I I want to continue growing it. I do set myself like download goals every month just to make sure that I'm trying to achieve some sort of momentum. And I've also learned a lot about the the unique value I can provide. You know, I think as soon as COVID hit in, in the spring of 2020 and everyone was grounded and at home, I immediately started to chase after, you know, famous people. I'm, I'm such a curious person, but I love like the Hollywood and the movies and, and behind the scenes things. And I just started chasing after, you know, those people because I thought they're all home now. They can't say no, <laughs> um, which to some extent was true. But it also, you know, when I started to have conversations with those people, I didn't necessarily, I didn't always have curiosity pointing me toward them. Sometimes it was just, oh, if I get a big name on the show, then, you know, a million people will listen and this will all be, you know, more popular than it ever was. And that's not really the case, right? Like people are not coming to my podcast to listen to big name guests. They're coming to my podcast to listen to my unique take on this theme that I've created and they cho- they trust me to you know to bring people to the table that will add value and that's not always a famous person right um i've had some pretty well known people on the show or at least well known to me and they've been fantastic conversations not all of them though you know so when i think you asked earlier like what were some conversations that really resonated with me and i remembered some lessons from you know those are almost a majority of those are going to be from people that I was drawn to from curiosity and who have an amazing story to tell, whether they're famous or not. Fame and a big social media following has nothing to do with that. And that's a lesson I just finally learned like in the past six months. Um, Because it's so easy as a creator to chase after those, you know, big name partners or guests that you think can help you grow. And they can if you're strategic about it. But I think I lost sight of what I was trying to do and what my listeners were tuning in for. Mm, that's interesting. As as someone, so as someone that's been around, that, that sounds really bad. <laughs> Says the old man at the other end of the mic here. Is <laughs> <laughs> someone that's been around um, with the Beyond the Pedway show, like ten years back, uh, eight ten years back, and I'm obviously with the the new podcast. If there was one piece of advice that you could give a new podcaster, what would that be? Oh, that's a great question. 
I think my piece of advice would be, again, to understand what your motivation is for creating the podcast and also to understand what your motivation will be to continue doing the podcast, right? So we, we, we said, you know, so many podcasts stop after a while and it's difficult to consistently publish any type of media. They all have their challenges. A podcast specifically, you're going to have to edit it, right? You're going to have to, you know, produce it, you know, whether you're doing a, a spoken word podcast or interview podcast, or you're putting together narrative stories like This American Life, you're going to have to put it together and like record it. And then you have to edit it. So there's a, there's the overhead in that, right? And you have to do it consistently. Um, even if you're doing just a season at a time. So my advice is truly understand the motivation you have for doing this, like at your core, you know, if someone comes up to you and says, why are you doing this podcast? You should be able to confidently say, this is why. And hopefully that why is something that you truly believe in. You know, it's not, oh, I, you know, I heard sports podcasts are big, so I'm going to do a sports podcast, even though I don't watch sports and I have no interest in sports. Um, really understand what that motivation is. And hopefully it's something you truly believe in. No, that's great advice. I know um, there was like one of the Facebook groups uh, that did, Someone had posted, what's your podcast elevator pitch? And there was about maybe, I don't know, 100 responses. And maybe half jumped in and plunked down an elevator pitch there and then. And about another 20, 30%, what's an elevator pitch? Why would I need one? And I think <laughs> to, to your point, you know, if you can't, there was like that golden rule in business, I think. If you can't describe your product in 30 seconds, forget it. You know, because if you can't succinctly describe it, why would others check it out, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's ironic that I'm giving this as my one piece of advice because you should see how often I text my friends asking them, what do you think we're only humans about? Like I'm constantly questioning if anyone else understands and not even understands what I think the show's about, but like if they get anything out of it. Like I'm constantly texting my friends like, what do you, what, you know, I, I, I asked them what you just asked me. I'm like, what would be your elevator pitch for we're only human? Like, and I'm just kind of like checking in, like, are they getting anything out of this? And it's amazing, you know, responses I get. Um, and so it reassures me that, you know, people are resonating with the show. Um, but yeah, and, and I also, you know, that's ironic, but it's also like I've, as I said, over the past year, I've really gone, or, you know, up, down, around, under, over in terms of like trying to figure out and trying to continue to hone in with myself, with what is my motivation behind this. and what am I confident in? Right. Like it's sort of like the, the age old, you know, advice of like, find your niche and like understand who it is that your community is and who you're speaking to. Um, that took me a while because I mean, honestly, cause my topic's so broad, but then I realized it's not that broad. Right. Like I was having a conversation with a friend, we were texting and, um, they were like, I think I said something about, you know, figuring out what category my, you know, when you publish a podcast, you got to choose what category and all the podcast directories it goes in. And I forgot what category I had it in, but they had said like, you know, I think yours should be in self-improvement or self-help. You know, I think it's self-improvement on Apple Podcasts, but that whole idea of like self-help, self-improvement. And I was like, that's so funny because I think that too. And I've been reluctant to put it in there because like everyone, you know, self-help books sort of have this negative connotation. And he was like, no, like you should be proud. And I'm like, you're right. Like I should just redefine self-help as, you know, be proud that my podcast is about that. And who cares if anyone, you know, thinks self-help books are shitty. Like this is, I'm going to redefine it and put a good name on it. And so <laughs> it's again, like I had to reconnect with like, what is my motivation? Well, my motivation is self-help. Like I literally started this podcast because I needed to help myself and I ran out to get others to help me too. And, you know, from there it grew into like, let's help others, you know, from me helping me <laughs> or others helping me. And so, yeah, why wouldn't I put it in the self-help, you know, podcast category? But the fact that I was even questioning that <laughs> is sort of, you know, like, was I truly understanding my motivation? And it goes back, that ties back to your point, Eller, about the whole uh, imposter syndrome, you know, um, where oh, everybody's yeah. just making up as we go along, not 
you know, we're, we don't all have it going on or whatever. Um, and I think to your point there, it's that's such a big stumbling block for a lot of people to get over, you know, that, that whole imposter, I'm not good enough, I, I shouldn't be in this category of all these other people or whatever that I listen to or, or look up to, etc. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, and I'm sure we all have different levels of it. I'm very susceptible to it on all the mediums I create on. So with this podcast, I mean... I mean, let's be honest. When I first heard of your podcast, Danny, I ran over right away. I'm like, how many reviews does he have? How many episodes does he have? What What do the reviews say? How many stars does he have? You know, because I'm constantly like, you know, this is someone who I respect and who creates good things. And like, is he, is he, you know, hitting out of the park? And if he is, how do I, how do I do it like Danny's doing it? And, you know, and again, like it's that idea of focusing on like, what are you good at? What's the motivation behind yours? Who are you creating this for? And that might not align, you know, you might have a totally different audience than I do. And, you know, that's the people might be listening to both our podcasts for different reasons. And that's awesome. And so, yeah, imposter syndrome, there's a whole episode of, of We're Only Human with Amber Nasland where we talk about that a ton because she, you know, is a big struggler with that too. And I, I really think we all are, but she has kind of really focused on it in the past, you know, couple of years and wrote a lot of articles about it and just sort of explored the idea more. So we talk about it a lot, but it's honestly, it's come up in a majority of the conversations that I have with people. And that's the funny part, right? Is it's like, I intentionally, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a very curious person. I love to talk to people of all walks of life. And so we're on the human futures people from, you know, stunt women to musicians, to entrepreneurs, to you know, people who quit their corporate jobs to, you know, fathers and mothers. And it's, you know, people of all walks of life, there's value in understanding what it is you're creating and who it is you're creating for. Like, even though I'm, I have this broad topic of resiliency and, and really, as my friend always, when I ask him, what do you think we're all human is? He says, it's about the human struggle. I'm like, oh yeah, it kind of is. Um, even though that's kind of broad. And even though I talk to people intentionally, because I'm curious from all walks of life, I think today, you know, every day now, I finally have a better picture of what it is I'm creating, you know, who it is I'm speaking to and who it is I'm interested in and what they're hopefully getting out of that. Um, but I still, you know, imposter syndrome, I, I'm better today, but I, I still, there are moments where I still am always comparing myself to other podcasters. You know, I'm looking at like, you know, what are they doing well? I mean, yeah, it's, I, I don't know if it's something you ever completely solve. <laughs> now, obviously, your show, uh, you just mentioned it, you have, um, you've got the one overarching topic, but you have people from all walks of life coming on and sharing their stories. And, and obviously, their stories have helped inspire others, like you mentioned earlier, uh, Mari, that helped, you know, yourself with, with your situation. With, uh, with that in mind, and, and people that, that you've looked up to over the years and learned from, who would you say your biggest hero is, and, and why that person, or maybe more than one person? Oh, that's a fun question. I don't know if I have one hero. I mean, as cliche as it sounds, <laughs> like every person I've interviewed for Only Human, honestly, is my hero. Like, you know, going back to like, what was my motivation? My big motivation, you know, was I just got divorced. I'm going through a giant life change. It's hard. I, I think I'm doing it well, but it's hard. And, you know, I basically started finding these people and I'm like, hey, you went through a big life change. How did you get through it? How are you strong enough? How can I be strong? And that just became like, that's what I'm going to do every week. I'm just going to find people who I'm very curious about and understand like, how did you get through what you got through? Or, you know, just daily life. How do you survive daily life? Like life is hard this month. How are you surviving it? And yeah, I mean, that to me, like they're all heroes in my eyes because they've taught me something about how to, you know, continue being resilient and continue being strong for, you know, the next challenge that life throws at us. And, you know, we're recording this in fall 2020, the big COVID pandemic, you know, which has oddly united us across the world. Like there's no human on this planet that isn't affected by it. Um, so, you know, I, I think resiliency is something that, you know, we all at this moment are probably thinking about, like, how do we continue to be strong to to make it through whenever this thing ends? But yeah, I think that's a great question. But I, as cliche as it sounds, I really do think every guest I've ever had on the show and will continue to have, you know, are, are going to be heroes of mine. No, no, that makes perfect sense. Not cliched whatsoever. <laughs> so, so Tim, this has been an absolute blast. I've really enjoyed chatting with you today. Um, for people that want to find out more about the show, 
um, and learn about, you know, learn the stories of the people you've spoken to and, and catch up. And, and really, I mean, I've been enjoying catching up on the different t- uh, tales from the, the episodes I've listened to so far. I think I've got about another six batched up ready to go. Um, so for, for anybody that wants to listen to your show, find out more about the, you know, the We're All Human podcast and the project and, and what it entails. Where's the best peop- uh, people? <laughs> Where's the best place that they can find you online to connect with? You can hit up we're only human um, That'll lead you to all the podcast directories. Um, but of course, you can just find We're Only Human. It's a big, bright orange uh, cover on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, all of those. Um, on Instagram, We're Only Human Podcasts. Also on Twitter, the W O H Podcast. Um, but yeah, We're Only Human is probably the easiest place to, to find out. Okay, awesome. And I'll make sure to drop the, all the links to that in the show notes. So if you're listening on your favorite app, make sure you check the show notes out as usual so you can link through to Tim's site and check out more about the podcast. So as I, as I said, Tim, really appreciate you coming on today and I've really enjoyed the chat with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I love it. Keep up with the good stories. It's fun to hear about uh, other people creating out there. Oh, I'll solid try. <laughs> So this has been another episode of Podcaster Stories. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to share it with someone that you feel might get value from it as well. And you can catch up on the, any episodes you've missed over at podcasterstories.com or on your favourite app like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and more. Until the next time, take care and stay safe. <laughs>